Welcome to Highlands and happy Mother's Day. We are so thankful that you're here with us for this special time of worship where we are going to be reading this scripture. Jesus says, this is why the Father loves me. I can't wait to dig into the scripture with you later. Let's spend some time in worship. Thanks again for joining us here at Highlands Church Online and today. 
We just want to pause and just say, Happy Mother's Day. We hope, we pray, that especially today, and it should be every single day, but especially today, that you moms out there feel celebrated. We want to celebrate you. And so we have a lot of stuff that's going on. But today being Mother's Day, here at church, what we're doing um, is we're having free family photos. So if you're watching this online and there's an opportunity for you to run down here and get your family together and take a photo, come on down. We would love to have that um, available for you. Uh, We'll be posting them um, online so that you can actually uh, download them and print them out at your own leisure. Also, too, Women's Night of Worship. It's going to be happening May 21st. It's going to be right out here on the lawn. You want to make sure you come out, ladies. Get uh, plugged in to the women here at church. Have a great time. There's going to be a band. There's going to be bonfires. There's going to be s'mores. I think I'm going to show up just for the s'mores. Wait, it's not for me. It's for women. So anyways, but there's going to be a, they're going to have a great time here on the lawn. So you want to make sure that you participate in that. That's going to be May 21st. Also, too, the next concert is the weekend right after that. And it's going to be our very own Ben Kasherak. I know I always say his name wrong, but he can correct that in post-production. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, thanks, Kenny. Let's, uh, let's take a minute and clear this up. And I don't know if you guys know, Ben actually had the opportunity to go to Nashville and record some of his music with some very talented musicians and producers. And what he's going to be doing, he's going to be performing that music that he wrote, original stuff, right here on the lawn. That's going to be May 27th. It's going to start at 6.30. So make sure you're here, bring your lawn chairs, and get ready for a great time of worship and music with their own Ben. So also, too, Uh, We've been talking about this a lot lately, but Summer Spectacular, VBS right here at Highlands Church is happening. It's June 14th through the 18th from 9 a.m. to noon, high noon. It's a Western theme, so you want to make sure you sign up your kids. There is a link right here for Eventbrite to sign them up. Uh, It's going to be for incoming kindergartners and outgoing fifth graders, so it's going to be the best time of the summer for your kids, so make sure you sign them up, and as always... As always, always, we never want to forget this. We just want to say thank you for your continued prayers and your financial support. Without your financial support, we can't do what we've been doing as a church. We've just celebrated 15 years of being here in Paso, and we um, we want to. We we believe that God has a plan for us for the next 15 and further, but we can't do it without your financial support. So make sure keep giving so that we can keep doing for the kingdom of God. You can have 
have my heart You can have my heart You can have my heart You can have my heart My heart is yours forever My heart is yours forever My heart is yours forever got it you got it you got it if you want my heart you got it you got it you got it if you want my mind you got it you got it you got it if you want my mind you got it you got it you got it if you want my soul you got it you got it You can have my heart oh, 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 oh You can have my heart You can have my heart I wish I had something to do. <sighs> Thanks for letting me sleep in, kids. If you make a mess in the kitchen, please let me know so I can clean it up. Raising kids is so easy. I just love driving around all day. Oh, I never have to repeat myself. They always listen so carefully. Oh, look, an empty box of cereal. Love it. Just wipe it on your sleeve. It's pretty cold, but you don't need a coat. Oh, you don't have to push in your chair. Don't make your bed, you're just gonna sleep in it again later. I think I'll skip the coffee today. You know, these throw pillows look way better on the floor. I'm really not that busy. Well, you haven't showered in three days, but I think you smell great. We do have food at home, but let's just go out to eat. Just brush your teeth whenever you feel like it. Here, take my phone charger and go put it in your room. Oh, just leave your dirty dishes on the counter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's all pull on our phones. Youth sports are so cheap. Braces are so cheap. School fees are so cheap. Hey, can you come crawl in bed with me around 2 a.m.? Thanks. Okay, I just spent two hours making dinner, but if you don't like it, that's fine. Just let me know and I'll make you something else. Don't even bother looking for that. I'm sure it's lost and gone forever. Can somebody please throw something at my head? 
I mean, I can keep track of every single one of your things. I get a ton of sleep. I get a ton of gratitude from my children. I get a ton of unsolicited help with the housework. Oh, you don't have to hurry up. We're gonna be right on time. Can someone please throw something at the TV? Thanks for doing the laundry, everyone. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you use your outside voice? Ah! Fight, fight, fight! Ah! The floor of this vehicle is so clean, I can't believe it. Oh, good. Another trip to the grocery store today. Let's go. Hey, I'm gonna hop in the shower. Does somebody wanna come use the bathroom while I'm in here? Welcome, we're so thankful that you're here with us as we jump into this conversation called For You, where we're really asking ourselves the question, what does it mean to be able to say we are the ones who Jesus loves? Or what does it mean when Jesus says the greatest love? Now, as we begin this conversation today, there is something that we all know to be true. And here's a way of putting it, that relationships change depending on whether the other person is for you or not. Every single relationship that you make or have or start, at the very beginning, you make a judgment call. You start to evaluate whether that person is on your side or not on your side. You start to ask whether they are, they are a friend or whether they're someone who brings a threat into your life. Essentially, you're trying to find out, are they for you? Are they really someone who's for you? Another way of putting this is that the basis of all relationships is trust. A good relationship a healthy relationship needs to start out with some element of trust, and then that trust builds over time. And so we are talking about that today, essentially as it relates to the concept of someone being for you, and especially God being for you. Now, the question I have for you today is, who has been for you and has put your needs before others? Think about the people in your life. Now, today is Mother's Day. We want to celebrate mothers, anybody who's been a mother to somebody else. Perhaps Perhaps it's your own mom that has been the best mother to you or your grandmother that's been the best mother. Maybe even your dad. Some of those dads out there are, do the mothering in their families or for their neighbors or for their kids. Some, sometimes it is a neighbor. Sometimes it's a teacher who comes in and does that thing that we know to be so, so supportive. It, it's, it's really essentially putting us before them. It's, it's this beautiful act and I want you to think about it because invariably, if it hasn't happened already, it will happen in your life. Someone will come along who's going to put you before them. And you will have this thing resonate in your soul where you'll realize that truly that person is for you. And the scripture we're talking about today is this story where Jesus heals a blind person and he's disrupted this whole community because they're trying to figure out who Jesus is, this stranger that has come into their midst, this person that they can't identify. They don't know who this is, but he's coming and heals somebody that they've known since birth has been blind. So they have this town council, this tribunal, they argue about who Jesus is. And in the very next scripture, Jesus starts to say who he is. He starts to tell them who he is. And what he does is give them a pathway for understanding what it means, what this thing means called the greatest love, to understanding how much Jesus is for you is what he says to them. And he's saying to us today too. This is what he says to the, to the Pharisees who are gathered together, the re religious establishment people. He says, I am the good shepherd. He's trying to help them understand who he is. Because he, to the end, again, to them, he's just a stranger. They've never seen him before. They don't really know who he is. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd, Jesus says, lays down his life for the sheep. Just an image that, that, that resonates. It's, it's powerful. It moves your soul. This, this sacrificial love. He says, when the hired hand sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and he runs away. Essentially, the hired hand is an hourly worker. He's getting paid by the minute, not even mi minimum wage. And what does he do? He says, I'm out of here. He doesn't have the depth of love for these sheep. He doesn't care about them because he hasn't been there throughout the journey. And instead, Jesus says, the reason why is because he isn't the shepherd and, and the sheep aren't really his. So what happens? Jesus says, so the wolf attacks the sheep. <laughs> Should I start from the whole beginning? Yeah. Crime. 
No, we can do it again. Straight from that little spot. Same spot. I'm on a roll. I got it. Yeah, I know. I got you. Every, every verse. When the hired hand sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. Jesus is basically saying, this is a hired hand. This is somebody who, who is an hourly worker. They're getting paid by the minute. They are being paid less than minimum wage. So they're out of there. They don't have a priority in these sheep. They have high, better things to do than to die for a, this job. But Jesus says it's understandable. He says that's because the reason they run away is because the shepherd, he, this hired hand isn't the shepherd. The sheep aren't really his. And so Jesus says, so the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. He's only a hired hand, Jesus says, and the sheep don't matter to him. The first thing that Jesus teaches us as we're unpacking this question of what it means uh, to, to, to step into the greatest love and to be the ones who Jesus loves, this for you concept that changes lives. The first thing he teaches us is that Jesus lays down his life for you and will not leave you. There's a lot of people in our life that abandon us, that walk away from us during difficult times. Jesus is saying, things are never gonna get so ugly. You're never gonna be unimportant to me. You're never gonna be just a number. You matter so much. Jesus says that no matter what comes, he is going to stand in the way of danger and he's going to protect you. There is no greater way of communicating uh, the depths of love that you have for another person than to lay down your life. Jesus says, no one has a greater love than this, that they would lay down their life for someone else. And similarly, Jesus is saying that here. He's communicating to the Pharisees that, that he, he cares about them, that they matter because right now the Pharisees are challenging Jesus and they're wondering, hey, you know what? We really are not feeling that important because they're seeing that Jesus' focus is on all of these needs of people that aren't them. And they have been so used to being the center of attention for such a long time. See, Jesus drives the point home even further and he goes on to say this words, I am the good shepherd. Again, he says that. He says, I know my sheep and they know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I give up my life for the sheep. And then he adds this little addendum. By the way, he's saying this to the Pharisees, the, religious, the people in the religious establishment. He says, I have other sheep that don't belong to the sheep pen. You just need to know that. And I must lead them too. He says, they will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. The second thing Jesus is saying is, listen for Jesus' voice, calling you into a new community. The image that Jesus gives is, is a cool one. He, he's, when he's talking about the, the shepherd, what you can envision is the good shepherd standing in front of thousands of sheep, maybe 5,000 sheep. And there's some sheep inside of this flock that, that the good shepherd has developed a relationship with. And there's some sheep in this flock that actually love the good shepherd so much. They really, really care about the good shepherd. They know that the good shepherd is calling out to them. And they, it's almost like a friendship. And so imagine the good shepherd standing in front of a flock, a multitude of 5,000 sheep or 10,000 sheep, and then calling out. Now, there's a lot of sheep that are just gonna keep doing whatever they do eating grass, ignoring the voice of the good shepherd. But Jesus says there's going to be this group of, of sheep that will start to move when they, the minute they hear the voice of the good shepherd, they're going to perk up their ears and they're going to start moving right along, right toward the good shepherd, because they know that the good shepherd, the voice of Jesus is going to lead them forward into greener pastures. But then Jesus also says, you know, there's a lot of other sheep outside of this religious establishment that he's, he's talking to, this group of Pharisees. There's a lot of sheep. There's a lot of people beyond this. The, the, a, lot of, a lot of people that will respond to the voice of Jesus. And it's going to build a new community. One that's not, not perfectly aligned with the religious establishment. Instead, Jesus will be calling them out. This is, this is 
this is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees and speaking to us too, as we reflect about what Jesus is calling us out of. Is he calling you out of a religious establishment? Is he calling you out of a, a, a posture in your life, an attitude that you've had, a resistance that you've had that perhaps has built up because you've been wounded? Maybe there's somebody along the way that you put your trust in. You said, you know what? This person is for me. And then that person, you let them in and they turned out to be all about themselves and they took advantage of you and they left so much wreckage in your life. You see, Jesus is calling us out of the things that have become entrenched in our lives, that have become uh, barriers between us and him. And his voice is one that we should be listening for. We should be learning. It should be one that should become so familiar to us that when there's all of the other noise going on around, it stands out above the multitude and calls us forward because we, in those moments, that's when Jesus is leading us to the greener pastures. This is how the scripture goes on. Jesus says this last thing. He says, this is why the father loves me. I give up my life so that I can take it up again. And then he's clear. He says, nobody takes it from me, but I give it up because I want to. And a lot of people kind of imagine Jesus reluctantly giving up his life, that that it's not something that he chose to do. He is making it very clear. This was his choice. Jesus says, I have the right to give it up and I have the right to take take it up again. I have received this command from my father, says Jesus. The third thing is this, is that Jesus is in charge of his life and chooses to lay it down for you. Now, here's what we can understand as well, is that you and I, we are also in charge of our lives. Jesus is modeling for us. He's showing us that we can, that we can take charge of our lives. There's a difference between taking charge of our lives or just seeing where life leads us. And there's so much power in in the moments when we say, you know what, I'm taking what I've been given, I'm taking the life I've lived, and I'm putting it out there, and I'm going to live it rather than protect it. So as I've thought about this, there's a friend of mine who has a kid, and this kid, ever since he he was born, uh, has done flips. Uh, tricks uh, on bikes and scooters and motorcycles and climbed walls. And everything about this kid is dangerous. And you can sense that it's a, definitely a, a tough moment for the dad uh, as, he, as he sees his kid do all of these amazing things. But as I reflect on it as a parent, I realize that how, when Jesus says that, that God loves God loves that Jesus lays down his life, that Jesus takes charge of his life. I can relate and I can identify. As a parent, there's no greater joy than thinking about your kid going out there and doing the gutsy thing, whether it's taking the stage or applying for the job that's really scary or or doing that thing that that feels like a um, a real obstacle in their life, perhaps at the very beginning of life, it's riding a bike. And, and as much as we want, our, want to protect our kids and we want to see them live a life of cautiousness and carefulness and, and deliberation, there's also a part of us that wants to see our kids be gutsy. We want to see our kids really live. I love these words that Jesus says in this scripture. He says, this is why the father loves me. I give up my life so that I can take it up again. Similarly, in our lives, let's be the same kind of, uh, the same kind of people. Let's have the same kind of posture as our Savior Jesus, who, who says, you know what? I, I, I am in charge of my life, and I choose to lay it down, and I choose to, take, to do things in my life that, that are bold and that are brave and that are gutsy, and I do it rather than run away like the hired hand. This is, uh, th- this is how the kind of narrator describes the response to what Jesus says. In John 10, 19, it says, there was another division now. <laughs> it's yet people are just arguing, it says. There was another division among the Jews because of Jesus's words. Many of them, many of them said, 
He has a demon and has lost his mind. Why listen to him? Okay, so that's one group. And the other said, these aren't the words of someone who has a demon. Can a demon heal the eyes of people who are born blind? You know, the, the third thing that Jesus invites us to do is to allow others, uh, allow what you see Jesus do to help you understand what is true. Uh, some people are arguing that Jesus is, is not for them. Some of the Pharisees, some of the uh, Jewish leaders, it says, the Jewish opposition are starting to argue that Jesus is actually against them and that he doesn't want the best for them. In fact, they think that Jesus is out to get them. I don't know why. Perhaps they feel that Jesus wants to take away what little they have. But then there's others that say, hold on a second. We need to, we need to review the facts. We need to look at the details and really ask ourselves, what is it that Jesus has done? And as they do that, they say, look, the things that he's done don't align with the, with the um, characterization of someone who's not for you. Instead, the things that he's done sure do look a lot like someone who's really, really for us. In our own lives, we should reflect on what Jesus does, on, on what we see Jesus do. We should look at the the, the things that the hand of Jesus have brought into our life. And then, and then use that as an opportunity to understand what is true and who is Jesus and, and what it means to have someone who's really for us. You know, as we look at these truths and, and we grow in this understanding of Jesus called for you, I, I pray that we we find ourselves, no matter where we are, uh, freed from the wounds of the past uh, as we hear Jesus say that he is for us and he's never going to leave us, that he'll lay down his life for us, that he cares about us more than we could ever think or imagine. My prayer is we'd recognize Jesus is calling us into a new community. It's not the old community. It's not, it's not that Jesus is, uh, is, is building up a, reli- a new reli- a religious establishment. Jesus is saying, this, this new community is formed by his voice. It's one that is shaped and led by his voice and nothing else. My prayer is that uh, we would be inspired by the way Jesus lives to live our own lives, that we would be the kind of people that take charge of our life, that we would, we would make choices in our life rather than just letting life lead the way or going with the flow. And then finally, my prayer is that we would not be confused or, or, or co-opted by the voices of skepticism in our life that would claim to know who Jesus is, yet still ignore what Jesus has done the sacrifice Jesus has made, the love Jesus has extended, the the truth that Jesus has brought into our life of goodness and grace and hope and healing. You know, here's a good way uh, to think about it. You know, you may feel like you're on the outside. You may wonder sometimes, which is natural, if God is really for you, especially if you're having a really, really tough time, either this week or this month or this year. Everybody knows how that feels. Everybody does. See, for you, this series that we're embarking on right now is designed to help you see how everything Jesus has done, everything is explicitly for you. Now hear that. Some people feel like, oh, I'm just listening to a message that's really to somebody else. This message is for you. So this is what is for you is. This is for you. God is for you. Jesus is for you. This very message, this time that we're spending together, all the things that are happening in the church. The, I mean, my Bible is full of these little cards. They're invitation cards, but I really call them prayer cards. But this summer camp, it says on this card, for high school and middle school, I was just thinking, are there kids in our community that don't know that this is for them? Or this vacation Bible school thing that we're doing, 
are there families that think, you know, that's just for those Highlands people over there. That's just for the Christians. No, don't they know that this is for them? We're doing this for them. Or, or, or the concerts that were coming up. I mean, I'm, I'm not really trying to do a plug or anything, or, but I'm really trying to help you understand that these things are, are for you. If you don't see that they're for you, see the whole church, everything about the church. Yesterday, I walked downstairs and there was a classroom filled with people who were part of a grief group. And they were talking through that, that process of grief and, and they're putting Jesus at the center of it. And you knew that they understood that what was happening in that space was for them. See, it's not just that Jesus is for you, and that is true. The church is for you. The church is for you. That's what it's for. You know, the church is not, it's not even necessary for Christians. Christians don't need a church. If you're listening to this for the first time, you're not a Christian. You're saying, what is the church for? It's for Christians. No, 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 no. The church is for you. It's for you to serve you, to lift you up. You need to hear this. We are here for you. This is all for you. You see, for you is going to change your heart. It will change your relationships. It will help you to be a force of good. I hope you're excited. Because Jesus, today, for the next weeks as we walk through this series, is going to be speaking more and more boldly to our hearts and minds. I can't wait for the messages that are to come about the depths of his love and how much he is for you. Now, there's no better way to think about it on Mother's Day, a day in which we reflect on the love and mothers, the love of a mother is really the love of someone who puts somebody else before themselves. And that, it's that extraordinary love. And the one who teaches us about the true character and nature of motherhood and motherly love is Jesus himself. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for who you are. You are the good shepherd. You are the great parent you are the great overseer. You are the, you are the courageous one. You are the mama bear. <laughs> you are the one who would never let anything happen because why you care so deeply for us. And just like a kid hears the voice of their parent or, uh, and they, there's no mistaking it, so we too can tune our ears so that we could hear your voice at any time in our life calling us out of the multitude and calling us into a new community guided by your voice. Lord God, we thank you so much that you're teaching us how to take charge of our lives, uh, to, to, to be in charge, to make choices in our life rather than to just go with the flow. And Lord God, I thank you so much that we have the truth of who you are to guide our understanding of who you really are. And we praise, praise you, Jesus. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. <laughs>